Welcome to another episode of Stories of American World War II Veterans. I'm your host, Kayleen Reeser. I'm the author of 10 books of World War II stories based on my interviews with 260 World War II veterans. Today's story will be taken from book four of my World War II Legacies series. It is called We Defended Freedom, Adventures of American World War II Veterans. Today's story will be about Robert Kreider of the Army Air Corps. Robert Kreider's breath huffed out, making him lightheaded. Outside the cockpit of his C-47, temperatures soared above 100 degrees, normal for the Philippines. Inside, however, chills raced through his body. Earlier that day, Kreider's crew with the 64th Troop Carrier Squadron of the 8th Air Force had taken off from northern Luzon in the Philippines. Since arriving in the South Pacific, the Americans' missions had been to fly to war zones where trucks could not go, dropping supplies and carrying out wounded. Their latest mission consisted of getting ammunition to Allied troops dug into the mountains fighting Japanese forces. A native guide had claimed to know the troop's location. When the plane approached a dead end, Kreider realized the claim was exaggerated. 10,000 foot peaks filled his vision. Carefully, Kreider reset the big plane, chomping his gum in agitation. Were enemy forces below waiting for them to crash? Suddenly, anti-aircraft fire split the air. When shells punctured the ship's bottom, they were flattened by steel pieces crew members had recently placed under their seats. The half-inch sections would save their lives. A wing dam received damage from the ground fire, but Kreider managed to maneuver the plane out of the valley and away from the enemy. He was thankful they were not transporting wounded on the rocky trip. Born in Liberty Mills, Indiana in 1942, Kreider had worked at a local factory making school furniture after graduating in 1942 from Chester Township High School. When his draft notice arrived in March of 1943, Kreider was assigned to the Army Air Corps. The newest military branch had many slots needing to be filled, especially pilots. After completing a physical exam at Bearfield in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Kreider reported to Stout Army Airfield, then Stout Field, in Indianapolis before being sent to Keesler Field in Mississippi. Kreider completed months of training, including solo and cross-country flights from Randolph Field at San Antonio, Texas. In April, he flew with an instructor in the open cockpit of a PT-19, both wearing winter flying suits. When Kreider's instructor began to demonstrate a slow roll, Kreider looked down, horrified to discover he had forgotten to fasten his seatbelt. My instructor really chewed me out, he said. A number of student pilots were killed in training. When one pilot's plane got in a spin, he tried to recover but couldn't. By the time he bailed out, he was too close to the ground to survive. At Garden City, Kansas, Kreider advanced to PT-13s with closed cockpits. During night flights, pilots used flight instruments and studied the stars for navigation. At Pampa, Texas, he got his first taste of bigger aircraft with B-25 bombers. The planes had a range of 1,200 miles while carrying 5,000 pound bombs and 50 caliber guns. Upon graduating with his wings in 1944, Kreider was assigned to a B-24 bomber crew with the 64th Troop Carrier Squadron attached to the 403rd TC Group, 13th Army Air Corps. The crew left for New Guinea, stopping in Hawaii to shower and refuel before journeying on. In the tropics, troops fought not only enemy forces, but disease and climate. While flying over the Owen Stanley Range in Papua New Guinea, Kreider's crew encountered a storm cell. With peaks reaching 13,000 feet, he used all of his skills to avoid crashing. In March 1945, the crew relocated to the island of Leyte in the Philippines. Dense foliage meant short runways. Crew
crews were subject to ground fire. Kreider, who often slept under the wings of the plane, kept a pistol at his side. In winter, troops were housed in tents and ate mostly sea rations, canned food foodstuffs which rats scavenged for. In early 1945, Kreider contracted jungle rot, a type of infected skin lesion. A purplish ointment applied to his back helped the sores disappear. When the Japanese signed an unconditional surrender at Tokyo Bay on September 2, 1945, the Allies performed flyovers as a show of strength. We thought the Japanese military might try to get revenge, but nothing happened, said Kreider. He and other crew members looked forward to being sent home. During a furlough in 1944, Kreider had become engaged to a young woman from his hometown whom he was anxious to see. But the schedule to transport troops was staggered due to the enormous number of troops overseas. Kreider flew personnel to Japan during the occupation period while patiently biding his time. In August 1946, First Lieutenant Kreider boarded a crowded troop ship in Manila for the United States. We troops didn't mind sleeping on the deck, he said. We were just glad to see the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Kreider returned to Liberty Mills where he worked in the auto industry. He married his girlfriend Bonnie and they became parents to two daughters. Among the 100 flights Bob Kreider flew was one over the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He was stunned at the devastation from the bombs dropped there in August of 1945. But Kreider had no regrets about President Harry S. Truman's decision. If it had not been for those bombs, I wouldn't be here, he said. Thanks for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this week's version of Stories of American World War II Veterans. Thanks to all the vets watching this for your service. Please subscribe and share news about this channel to other people. And I'll look for you next week for another story.